Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. My name is Brigitte Gabrielle and I wanted to share with you my story. I realized yesterday when I put a post about my background that many of my new followers and people who know me as a political commentator who's always commenting on political events and current events that a lot of people have no idea about my background and why I am so passionate speaking the way I speak. But let me share with you my background and you'll understand why, where this passion comes from and why this, be, this week has been so difficult for me watching what's happening in the Middle East. You see, I was born and raised in Lebanon, which used to be the only majority Christian country in the Middle East. We were open-minded, we were fair, we were tolerant, we were multicultural. We prided ourselves on our multiculturalism. We had open borders. We welcomed everyone into our country because we wanted to share with them the westernization which we had created in the heart of the Middle East. Lebanon became Paris of the Middle East, banking capital of the Middle East. Unfortunately, all that began to change when we accepted a wave of refugees into our country, people who did not share our values, but wanted to use Lebanon as a launching pad to kill the Jews and drive them into the sea. Lebanon was the only country in the Arabic world that accepted the third wave of Palestinian refugees. When they came to our country, they wanted to destroy our country. They ended up destroying our country. My 9-11 happened to me in 1975 when radical Islamic Palestinians blew up my home, bringing it down, burying me under the rubble wounded. I ended up in a hospital for two and a half months. And as I laid in a hospital bed, hooked up to IVs, I would ask my parents, why did they do this to us? And my parents would tell me, because we are Christians, they consider us infidels and they want to kill us. So I learned since I was a 10 year old little girl that I am wanted dead simply because I was born into the Christian faith and lived in a Christian town. We ended up leaving the hospital and coming back home, but my home was no longer the home I left. I ended up living in an bomb shelter underground in an eight by 10 room without electricity, without water and very little food. And that's where I lived for the next seven years of my life from the age of 10 till the age of 17, robbed of my youth. The Palestinian Islamists cut off all water supplies to our town, cut off electricity, cut off food, in order for us to go out and get some greenery, we would go out and dig out dandelions and different greenery that grew around our bomb shelter because it was the only salads we had to eat. To get some water, we would crawl into a nearby spring to get some water because we were surrounded by Islamic Palestinian snipers shooting at us. And every time we left our bomb shelter to the spring to get water, we would say our last goodbyes because we did not know if we're gonna come back alive or dead just to get some water. This became my existence. I remember a few years into the war, in the beginning we thought it's gonna be a couple weeks and then everybody's gonna see the massacres that the Palestinians are doing to the Christians in Lebanon, how they put their heads together with the Muslims in Lebanon and declare jihad on the Christians, the massacres of children, the slaughter, even the crucifixion of Christian men on crosses. One of the famous city massacres was in the city of the Moor in Lebanon where they massacred the whole town. This barbarism, this Palestinian barbarism is not new. My father would say, all the Christian nations are going to wake up and see what's happening to Lebanon, to the Christians, and they're going to come save us. But nobody came and the world forgot about us. I remember three years after living in the bomb shelter, I was 13 years old. And one of our uh, militia, one of our Christian friends stopped by. And he said to me, Brigitte, we heard a lot of chatter on the radio and we believe tonight we are going to be slaughtered. And he said, if I don't see you tomorrow, I wish you a merciful death 
and he left. And I remember at the age of 13, dressing in my Sunday best, my Easter dress, because I wanted to look pretty, because I knew that when they come to slaughter me, there would be no one to bury me. And I wanted to look pretty when I'm dead. And I remember my mother combing my long black hair as I sobbed, sobbed, begging her, I don't want to die. I'm only 13 years old. Please do something. I don't want to die. And there was nothing my mother could say to me. And I remember sitting in the corner of our bomb shelter and my father started reading from Psalms. I shall walk into the valley of death and fear no evil for thou art with me. And my parents said to me, when they come to slaughter us tonight, we will create a distraction. You're an only child, you're a young child. We lived a long life. We will create a distraction and you just run towards Israel, run towards the Israeli border and don't look back. You see, we knew if we run to the Jews and beg for help, the Jews are not going to slaughter us because we had more shared values with them than we had with the Muslims. Thank God I did not have to make that decision that night because that's the night when Israel came in physically into Lebanon and established the security zone and kick, uh, kicked out the radical Islamic Palestinian element that surrounded our town. And Israel set up artillery bases in the hills surrounding our town. And that's how we survived for another five years until 1982 when Israel invaded Lebanon, working with the Christians, trying to help the Christians take back their country, take back their democracy and kick out the radical Islamic element that had taken control of the country at that time. We had 11 Islamic terrorist organizations operating out of Lebanon, including the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization. And Israel finally ended up kicking Yasser Arafat and his cronies all the way to Tunisia. And that's how we came out of the bomb shelter and back to rebuilding our lives. I ended up moving to Israel in 1984 and becoming a news anchor for world news in the Middle East, covering world events because I wanted to make it my life's mission to fight evil, to understand how can people hate so much to commit such atrocities. My life story is detailed in a book titled Because They Hate, A Survivor of Islamic Terrorism Warns America. The book sold over 1 million copies. It came out in 2006. I encourage you to read it. I encourage you to order it so you can understand why I fight terrorism, why I speak with such passion and conviction. People who watch me debate people and fight people and care less about the labels people throw at me. They call me radical. They call me a hater. I don't hate anybody. I pray for the Middle East. Today I'm praying for the Jews, for the Palestinians, for the Lebanese, for the innocent people who are dying and who are going to die because of the work of Hamas, because of the work of Hezbollah, because of the work of Iran, because of the crazy radicals who want to kill, who want to create mayhem on the world. We must stand up against barbarism. Barbarism done in the name of any people, of any religion is not acceptable. Barbarism is when you shoot babies in their cribs. Barbarism is when you decapitate babies. Barbarism is when you rape women and kill them. Barbarism is when you kidnap old uh, grandmas and you kidnap children and you put them in cages with the sole purpose of torturing them and killing them. This is barbarism, unacceptable under any name from any people, from any religion. That's why the good people need to stand up against terrorism, against Islamic terrorism. Because what starts in the Middle East doesn't end in the Middle East. What starts in Israel doesn't end in Israel. This is a war against uh, 
between barbarism and civilization. This is a war between democracy and dictatorship. This is a war between goodness and evil. We either win or they win. We need to fight to win. We need to stand up with Israel to win. This is our fight and we must win it.